Hi. I want to welcome uh, all of our Facebook uh, subscribers. How are you doing today? Can I get a quick uh, sound test just uh, to make sure that uh, you guys can hear me well? And then we'll start. Hey, Gabriel. Good to see you here. Sound and image is good. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So, hi again. Um, I'm coming off um, a green week, but uh, I'll tell you what, that was a tough week. I was fighting. I was fighting each and every day. Uh, started red every day in the past five days. Uh, three of them turned out green, two of them turned out red. And the result is green. I'm not sure exactly how much, something like uh, two grand, I believe. But I've been much better than that earlier. I mean, not today, a few days ago. So the thing is, quite a tough week. And I'm trying right now, and I, I don't yet have the answers. I'm still thinking about the real, um, about really what happened here. Um, so I don't yet have the answers. Maybe it's the market uh, direction that suddenly changed down. Uh, this strong move down, which changes the rules a little bit. I've been through this quite a lot of times, but once you have such a dramatic change of direction, it does happen that uh, things are getting a little bit out of hand. Like, for example, if I would short a stock since the volatility is very, very high, if I would uh, short a stock, um, it is very, very possible that I'm right. However, it will only get down after a relatively big pullback. So it is possible that my planned stops, for example, are not right. Um, maybe I should give, um, I should trade lower size, um, have a little bit, uh, give, give, give a little bit for more freedom to the stocks I'm trading. Like I would go long and sometimes I would be just, uh, taken out of a trade, shaken out of a trade, and then the stock would actually go up. And that happened to me a lot of time this during, during the past week. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what should be my lesson for the next week. And I'm really glad I finished this week green. But boy, that was a big fight. So I'm, I'm, it will take me through the weekend to understand exactly what, uh, what was going on. So any questions, uh, traders, anything you want me to comment on, anything you think um, we should talk about? Um, am I supposed to be seeing your question somewhere around here? How can you start trading? Well, um, we do offer that. I mean, that's what we do in TradeNet. You could definitely join us. Um, you could. I, I think the first thing you need to do is just uh, test us out. You don't need to pay anything. Just take our 14-day free trial, see if you like it. And then, I mean, the best way to start is with our 500 into a program. And I guess um, Gabe or Clifton could uh, give you the link. So that, that would give you some basic education. We, we provide education, the basic um, Self-study course is a great course. You can start with that. And you, once you start trading with us, um, joining the course, you could, you are eligible also for a live funded account. So you could get a live funded account, which you can trade, not with your money, without risking your money. And I think once it's all $500, I think there's a promotion now which you can buy for $3.99. I'm not sure, but I'm sure you can get the link. Why doesn't uh, it... Oh, here's the link. So, Facebook um, 
I need to scroll down all the time, which is kind of strange. I would expect Facebook to enable this to come down without me scrolling. So sorry, I didn't see the questions. I'm going for the last now. So here's the links. You can, you are welcome to join. What do I think about uh, Netflix? Well, um, <laughs> I had a tough uh, day today with Netflix. But are you asking uh, on intraday? Um, let me take a look now. Now, when I watch the intraday chart of Netflix right now, I don't see anything. It's not at all interesting. I had a losing day, trade today in Netflix, but it's holding, but just going sideways. If I'm watching the daily, or in fact, you need to watch the weekly, it's a very strong stock and it should continue higher. Also, I don't think there's, right now, the few, last few days, the market came down, but I don't think there's a good reason to think, not for now, maybe I'll change my mind soon. But right now, the economy is great and I don't think the, I don't think the, that the market should come down. A pullback is good. I mean, we've been moving up for such a long time, so a pullback should come. And uh, this may not be the end of the pullback, but strong companies like Netflix should continue higher. So my opinion about Netflix, if you're swing training it, it's great. If you're looking for intraday longs, that's also great. Netflix should, should be great. But you have to find the right technical points to move in. Uh, my success rate uh, in trading, David, is um, 68%. During the first two or three minutes, big question. I don't really know exactly what is my success rate uh, in the first two or three minutes if I take a trade during that. I, I think it's approximately the same. It's approximately the same. should be the same. So if you're asking my success rate for specifically for the first two minutes, I'm not sure, but I guess it's... It should be the same, around 68%. Why CFDs do not allow to trade all 10,000 shares that are listed in the USA? Good point. Uh, Ivan, uh, CFDs are not shares, right? CFDs are contracts for difference. Uh, they're like options, for example, which are also contracts. Now, you don't find options to all 10,000 shares in the US, right? So that's the same thing. It's not a stock, it's a contract. Um, shares are stocks, sh shares and stocks, of course. Um, then you have um, CFDs, contracts, you have options, which are contracts, uh, and you won't find that in options too. The thing is with CFDs that they are being they are being uh, produced by brokers. It's just like, um, and these brokers are all market makers. So just like market makers don't provide services to each and every of the 10,000 stocks because, mainly because of the liquidity, the same thing applies for CFD. Brokers do not apply, um, don't provide liquidity for all 10,000 stocks because the, the liquidity of the stock itself is very low and they need to be able to hedge their trades using the real market stocks. If they hedge their trades using real market stocks and there's no volume in real market stocks, not that they always need to hedge their trades and not that they always do so, but if they do need to hedge their trades, they can do it with low volume stocks. Therefore, exactly like options, you can't find CFDs for all stocks uh, you will find cfds only for stocks which are uh, relatively high volume hundreds of thousands of shares anyway it doesn't b bother me because i never trade low volume stocks so it's none a non-issue for me so i very rarely find a stock that is not tradable a cfd that is not tradable i re very rarely find anything like that so doesn't bother me. But if you are a penny stock trader, if you are uh, specializing in low volume stocks, CFDs are not for you. CFDs are probably the best thing that I ever came across. 
uh, they helped me a lot. Um, it's great to trade CFDs. The advantages are huge, much better than trading stocks. I've been trading stock for so many years. But disadvantage, you can't trade low volume stocks. Um, and therefore, CFDs for some traders may not be right. Thanks, Gabo. Um, okay, Philip asked uh, last time, you said not to use a demo account for too long. I still think so, but you didn't really say exactly why. But it's because it makes uh, you lose sense of reality. Yes, not taking seriously since it's fake money. Absolutely so. But so far, I'm not positive yet. Well, you will not get positive, Philip, without uh, trading real money. The thing is with, uh, with demos is they teach you how to trade the wrong way. They teach you, they don't teach you the right, um, when, when, you, when you're detached from your feelings, uh, from the psychology of trading, you are at a different world. You're not in the world of trading. You have to step into the world of trading and I don't care if you do that with 10 shares. If it doesn't hurt you, you learn nothing. A child does not learn how to walk unless he falls, gets hurt. Gets, gets hurt. Uh, you have to fall 500 times before you learn how to walk. If you don't do that with uh, real money, you will never learn. Uh, stocks will teach you how to trade correctly, do it with very, very small size, but trading uh, demo is not good for you. I mean, it's good, it's great to learn the basics, it's great to learn the, uh, the, the technical basics of the platform and the basics of trading. I would recommend not to trade demos more than two weeks. For them, some of you, it's better to trade for more. You know, you know what? Let me let, let me come out with a little bit different answer here. I would say this: very rarely I come across some people who are good demo traders. What do I mean by good demo traders? I would say this: if 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 you can trade demo and convince yourself, it's not easy, that you are actually trading the real stock like mentally work it out in a way that you're not going to do any mistakes. You're not going to all of a sudden trade 4,000 shares when you're supposed to be trading 200. You're not going to not have a stop loss. You, in other words, if you have an amazing discipline and you can trade demo as if it was a real live account, amazing discipline and have the good feeling of trading demo as if it was a live account and that, I can hardly come across people who are like that, but there are some. If that's your case, continue trading demo until you feel free, until you feel good. But very hard to come across people who can really uh, trade demo as if it was a real account and get the same kind of feelings. Now, of course, it will never be a real account, but make more out of a demo account. Uh, Tomer asks, uh, what are the chances for beginners to become good ones without official education, in your opinion? Uh, very rarely that happens, Tomer. I don't see, I don't know, personally, I don't know traders who become successful without official education. Well, not official. I mean, okay, it doesn't have to be official. If you have a mentor, if you find somebody who uh, will take you by the hand and uh, teach you, that's great. But without education in trading, yes, you can become a great trader, but it will cost you so much money and the reason is, and the ask question is why? Why should you do anything like that? Just don't do it. I, I, I came to the conclusion I need education after a year. That was foolish, absolutely foolish. So yeah, you can do it yourself, but it's just gonna cost you so much. Just don't do it. Uh, Samuel asks, the S&P moves according uh, to the 500 stocks, that's correct. So why is that that when S&P falls, everything follows? Shouldn't it be the opposite way since S&P is, uh, is a reaction of what stocks are doing? That is correct, but you have to remember that not all of the market is the S&P. The S&P is 500 shares. Now, I usually trade around 2,500 shares. 2,500 shares, 
2,000 of them are not in the S&P, and they will still follow the S&P. So you see, yes, that is a question of the chicken and the egg, but each and every stock has a life of its own, and the S&P is the average of the 500. So you could still enjoy the S&P and trade the stocks and expect the stock movement. Again, I would say in just a few days, um, um, we're starting the Star Trader course on Sunday. The first lesson would be how to follow the S&P. And I think it's the most important lesson in trading. So the first and most important lesson is the stock that you're trading is going to follow the S&P and not the other way around. Although the S&P, as you say, is 500 biggest stocks, but remember there's 2,000 more. Now, there's 10,000 stocks in the, in, the, um, in the markets, but only 2,500 of them have the volume and are over $10 and would be regarded as stocks that are following the S&P. Therefore, the S&P should give you a very big advantage if you watch the S&P and trade. If I'm missing any of your questions, please write them again. I'm sorry, I'm trying to go through. Uh, Tom asked again, uh, do you think do I think that uh, beginner can become good traders without official? Oh, you already asked that, so I answered. Mm, let's see. Mary, you ask. Um, hi, Mary. Do you still use the Twin and the VIX? Uh, not as much as I used before, I have to say that. Things are changing. I do watch the VIX, definitely. Uh, the train also sometimes, but not as much as I used to. You know, I used to watch more because my trading systems were more of trading systems. I'm not saying it's not it's wrong to use them. I'm just saying I don't use them because my trading system for the first 90 minutes of the trading day is based mostly on trading on shorting, trading reversals, gap downs, gap and goes, and stuff like that. For these, VIX and TWIN are less important. For other systems, like I used to trade before because I was trading more hours, definitely important. So yes, continue watching them. Carlos asks, um, how do I know what stocks to pick for swing trading? Are they different from the ones that I pick for trading? Not really. They are quite the same, just the entry points are a bit different. The management is a bit different. Swing rules comes with different, uh, with different ideas. And we're just starting, Carlos, here. I don't know if you listened to what Scott mentioned earlier, but we're just starting here, um, this new swing pick, which is you guys are picking the stocks. We, uh, Scott and I, are going to be going through the stocks and picking from your picks. So it's a new swing kind of idea that we're going to start uh, next week. So the, the, base, the idea is the same. I mean, for example, I would be looking for a stock that is, if I go long, I would be looking for a stock that will be trending higher. I'd be looking for a stock that is... Uh, that has the volume, the technical formation, the industry. It's a bit different than intraday trading where you could uh, just settle with the intraday. I usually look at the daily too. I have no idea, Kasson, regarding the rumors that you mentioned. Really, I don't. Sorry, can't help you with that. Uh, Vadim asks, uh, "Watch trading. Which trading program I'm using for trading? I'm using uh, Colmex. Um, I guess the guys could uh, give you a link here. I'm using Colmex. Uh, Colmex uh, is a regulated uh, European broker. So if you live outside the US, you can use it. If you live inside the US, you cannot use it because it's not regulated in the US." but it certainly is regulated in almost everywhere around the world, but not in the US. If you're within the US and you want to trade the same platform, you can use, you can join our funded account program, but that's not going to be your account. You'll be trading a company's account and share the profit.
Uh, Anthony asks, uh, how often does uh, uh, spread uh, this way? Okay, so if I am, if I would be trading stocks and depending on the spread, spread is very, very, very important. However, you know, people often ask me, what spread wouldn't you trade? Like, okay, so you're trading uh, stocks without spread? Yes, of course, the, uh, low spread. Um, over 10 cents, would you trade them? Over 20 cents, would you trade them? Over $1 spread, would you trade them? Well, it's there's no rule for that. Um, I will trade stocks with high spread, even one point sometime. I will trade stocks with high spread, but that depends on a few issues. Where's the stock? What is the quantity? How fast does the stock is moving? Let me give you an example. Let's say, well, I, I will not get to $1 spread because that would be very, very rare. rare. But let's talk about a stock that uh, has 30 cents spread. So if there's like a 30 cent spread, which is a big, big spread, okay? And uh, I don't, well, depending on the stock, I may trade it. So let's say a stock comes with a 30 cent spread. Will I trade it? Well, look at the behavior of the stock. If the stock, if the stock has a 30 cent spread and the way it moves, the, 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 the volatility of the stock is like, if I'm going to get in now, I could be up one point in like 15 seconds, I will trade it. If I'm going to see a stock that trades on a spread that of 30 cents and not really moving much, I will never trade it. So will I trade a stock with 30 cents spread? Absolutely, yes, depending on its volatility, depending on where the stop loss would be, depending on my quantity, which is, of course, according to the stop loss, uh, will be determined. So it has to do with this, with, with the spread, how big is the spread, with how fast is it moving, uh, with the volume, with the volatility. So I can't give you a rule. I can't say over 10 cents, I won't be trading it, something like this. But generally speaking, if I can refer from trading stocks with spread, I would. But some trades look just amazingly good with high spreads. I still take them. No, you don't have a, a rule for trading spreads, but you have to look at them um, as they are related to the stock that you're trading. What, the, what does the market do? Um, is that a great breakout point where I really want to go long, but it comes with spread? How much do I like this trade? Do I like it good enough to, to, to get into a 20 or 30 cent spread? So see, I don't really have the answer for you, but I, I think I gave you the answer. Uh, say, ask, uh, I use a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio risk reward ratio correct many traders out there use three to one or above uh, okay sir uh, sir rodriguez regarding your question about uh, risk reward ratio um, that's a very good point i use one to one risk reward ratio and there's not a lot of people who use one to one risk reward ratio most traders i know who use one to two one to three and so on i'm very much for one to one but that is also a very personal thing. For example, I hate losing money. How about you? I'm sure you don't like losing money, but how much do you hate losing money? Are you, do you hate losing money as much as I do? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm very special that I really hate to lose money. So what I'm trying to say here, for me personally, one-to-one -one risk reward ratio is great because I... I, 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 in my opinion, I take less, well, it's not only about losing money, it's, it's about also having the success rate that I like to have. Okay, let me phrase it in this way. I don't want to make this a lesson of, uh, of, of 30 minutes like I do in the start of the course, which is about to start uh, on Sunday. So let me phrase it this way. Uh, think about it this way. If you have a one-to-one -one risk reward, if you buy stock, let's say it's $30, you want to go long, you click the button, and you have a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio, 
you are looking for a 30 cent target, a 30 cent stop loss. What is your chance? I mean, minimum is 50%, right? I mean, every monkey has 50%. And if your risk reward is one to one, even if you don't have the trend, even if you don't have the right technical formation, you still have one to one risk reward, you still have 50%. Now, if you have the the trend if you have the good technical formation and more and more and more and more you get over one to one risk reward uh sorry you get over 50 percent so let's say you you're a relatively good trader and you get to 65 percent success rate now if you have 65 percent success rate you build up your confidence but if you go to one to two risk reward like you try to risk 30 cents and try to gain 60 cents you won't have to st you won't start with 50% success rate, right? I mean, you're starting monkey kind of um, chance uh, to succeed is going to be less than 50%. Now, if you're a good trader, you'll have 50% or maybe 55%. Is that good? Yeah, even with 50%, you'll make money because with one to two risk reward, you'll still be making money even if you have 50%. But will you build up your confidence with 50%? Will you build up your confidence? Now, if you're new to trading, you need to build your confidence first. The most important thing for you to start with is build up your confidence. If you go to one to two or one to three, you're not building your confidence. You'll still make money with 50% success or with 40% success. You'll still make money. But how about your confidence? I think in the first two years or so, your confidence is more important than uh, the risk reward. Now, for me personally, because I hate losing and, 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 and I, get, I can get into a story here, talk about one hour, talk about it for one hour. Um, one to one works well mentally for me. Uh, plus, it builds my confidence. I need it. <laughs> and so it works well for me. Do I have losing months? The last losing month I had was uh, July 2016. And the previous month before that was July 2015. You could go back to my YouTube channel. My account is all over. I mean, you, you look at the annual re year's report. So I, I every year I do an annual review go back i show my account for the previous years if i'm not mistaken that was july 2016 july 2017 so rarely i get a red month but i do get some real uh, some some red weeks not very often but i do It works for you well, Iran. Good. Good to hear. If demo works for you well, if you feel like you're trading a live account, you're one of the rare guys that that can do that. It's it's not easy. Very, very hard. Yeah, good results. Fantastic. Glad to hear. Well, Samuel asks, why don't I increase my size from 4,000 shares to even more because I have such a great uh, control of my emotions? Tell you what, Samuel, it may surprise you. I recently checked uh, what happens if I trade less quantities than 4,000. I'm actually making more money. I'm trying to stop myself right now from moving down to 3,000 or even 2,000. I, re I recently found out, and especially after this week, I can tell you that if I reduce my size, I become a better trader. So you're talking to me about raising my size over 4K? <laughs> yeah, not for the foreseeable future. 
And I'm not in control as much as you think I am. Uh, spread shouldn't affect your stop, Anthony. Spread shouldn't affect your stop. If, if, if the stop is not realistic because there's a big spread, just don't get into the trade. Stop should be a technical point, which is very, very clear, it has nothing to do with spread. The spread is a disadvantage. You will be losing more money because of the spread. Your chance to succeed because of the spread are lower. But again, if you, then you need to, as I mentioned earlier, you need to love the trade. If you really, really love the trade and not all trades are created equally, if you really, really love the trade, go for it with the spread, but don't, don't use uh, an unrealistic stop just because of that. Alex says that um, he could have steady gains for about two months and then quickly give it up. Uh, did you ever go through the oh, 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 so many times, Alex? So many times. I'm not sure that uh, I gave up. Um, two months of gains so quickly, but I can definitely tell you that I gave up uh, on rare occasions. I mean, not rare occasions, sorry, I, if, if, depending on when. Right now, if I'm having a bad day, that would be like uh, $10,000 down, sometimes 12. Can't remember I had more than that in the recent years. And that would uh, may cause me to lose gains of anywhere between a, me, a, a week to a month. So I could lose gains of one month in one day. That does happen to me every few months. So that, that is something that I still, that still happens to me. But as I get better and better and uh, my um, become more and more disciplined, don't think that I'm disciplined enough. I'm not. I may be more than the average guy but I'm certainly not disciplined enough. I don't, sometimes I'm looking back at what I did and I'm just, you know, saying to myself, well, I was so undisciplined this day or in this trade or something like that. So you become more and more disciplined, but not enough. So if you're losing in one day, two months worth of uh, profits, something's wrong about the discipline, but you'll get better. I promise you, I've been there. I certainly lost more than a month if I go back years ago. So that's not special. But just think about discipline because that's the point. That's only discipline. You allow yourself to lose in one day more than your profits in two months. I'm not proud when I'm losing a month worth of profits. I never, I rarely do that. I mean, it has to be quite a bad month to lose one month. So usually I, will, I may lose a week to two weeks of profits. Um, um, Mensai Khan, if I pronounced your name correctly, I'm sorry if I didn't. Um, stocks go up if if it breaks the view up or goes down, if it breaks down. View up is a very, very important tool. I'm not going to get into details right now, but I, I, I think you should look uh, for my uh, for my for my lesson regarding view up. Just look, go to YouTube, write my name down and the word view up, and you'll see some lessons of a lesson about that. So view up is an important tool in your right. It 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 helps. Uh, no, Anthony, I did not get uh, a child life uh, shirt till now, but um, those of you guys who are interested in uh, nice uh, in great shirts, um, I'll put the link to. So just take a look there. Anthony, the one behind it. 
David asks, can I talk a little bit about volume? I know that the volume is a um, large determining factor. If you will or not trade the trade, absolutely. So yes, um, so specifically talking about the volume, the volume trend, not just sufficient daily volume. Okay, I got you. Um, you know, I'm 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 not going. To, I don't think I'm going. To, I have something new to tell you about volume. Probably things you already know. So volume is like a confirmation. It's a confirmation of the trend. So basically, when we're watching volume, and again, I th I'm, I'm sure you know already know that when we're watching a, a stock trending higher, uh, the confirmation is high volume. When we're watching a breakout, the confirmation is high volume. When there's no volume breakout at the breakout, then we sh you should start thinking, well, something may be wrong about this one. Why is not everybody is buying with me? If you're the only one buying, you're probably going to lose money. Uh, if stock is trending higher and there's no volume on the uptrend and the volume is growing on the downtrend, for example, but so something wrong with this trend, it could be just noise. So the, there's nothing special to talk about volume other than the basic things that I think you probably read them in the book or any book or just heard somebody else talk about it. I don't have something special to say about volume. I mean, maybe the only thing I could uh, say that not a lot of people know about it is the volume before a breakout, because that usually if, uh, if a stock is breaking out and consolidating before the breakout, that's maybe the most imp one of the special things about volume you want to see. Let me ask you, before a breakout, if a stock is consolidating before a breakout for a while, Let's let's talk about intraday breakout, okay? So let's say stock moved up to thirty dollars and now it's consolidating for the past uh, twenty minutes before maybe breaking out, and you're looking to trade it. What would you like to see? High volume or low volume before the breakout? Would you like it to see it consolidating with relatively high volume or consolidating with relatively low volume? I'll come to your questions, to your answers later, and I will answer that. Till then, I'll write, try and read some more questions here. Where to put your stop loss order, Tomer asks, uh, if he's willing to risk uh, $50 per trade with 100 shares. It depends on stock price. You see, it has nothing to do with how much money you are willing to risk. The stop has nothing to do with how much money you're willing to risk. The stop has nothing to do with how many shares you're trading. The stop is very, very technical, Tomer. The stop you're using is has nothing to do with you. It has to do where buyers came in earlier, for example, if you're long. So look at the stop first and then determine, then determine your quantity. Nobody cares you're trading with 100 shares. Who cares you're trading with 100 shares or have a $50 stop loss? $50 stop loss is great. I mean, if you if you come to the risk, to an understanding that you don't want to risk more than $50, great. But then you need to determine how many stocks you're buying depending on the technical stop loss of the stock that you're trading. So it has nothing to do with the fact that you want to trade 100 shares. Always look for a technical stop. How did I do today, Mark? I'm down. Uh, a little bit better than I did like an hour ago. Now I'm down only $4,500. $4,500. I was almost at six, but uh, PNC finally starts working a little bit better, although I did not yet take the profits. I'm up like $1,500 on this trade, and I'm watching it at all times. Welcome, Rodriguez. Your heart pounds when you're losing money. 
Eric, mine too. <laughs> you think I don't? No, I, I didn't think. I, I didn't say. You didn't. I mean, I'm talking to to all of you. Uh, if you guys think I don't, I hate losing money. I told you. Uh, Adolfo asks, um, is there some kind of hint in order to determine the amount risking in the trade in order to calculate the proper risk reward? Um, yes, uh, but I'll, I'll go to the basics here, Adolfo. Uh, you, you are supposed to be risking anywhere between 1% to 2% of your capital every trade. So the amount of money you're supposed to be losing has nothing to do with the r &R, has nothing to do with stop loss. It has to do with how much you are willing to lose per trade. And it should be between one to 2%. 1% regularly. But sometimes if you really, really, really love the trade, it could go up to 2%. So you may be risking more when you have a great looking trade. But your average should be probably 1.2%. So then, if if you know how much money you're willing to lose per trade, now you have to think about to determine your R and R and things like that. So it starts with how much money you need, you you may lose. Anthony asked about um, wait for confirmation. Should traders wait for confirmation when they are getting into a trade? Um, I love this question. Uh, I love this question, Anthony. And uh, guys, excuse me, but um, uh, I know there's more and more questions. That would be the last thing I'm going to discuss today because I really need to go. And we've been here for the past uh, 45 almost minutes. But um, I think that's a very important point. And since it's such an important point, Anthony, I'm going to make it my last um, answer today. Before that, we I'm just going to talk a little bit about, before answering that, we talked earlier about uh, volume before, uh, before a breakout, which is kind of confirmation too. Uh, you want to have low volume before breakout, not high volume before breakout. And um, so if your answer was low volume before breakout, that was the right answer um, because you don't want to see um, more hands, new hands coming into a trade. So if you have a trade that is just before a breakout and that you have a high volume, that means a lot of stocks are changing hands. You don't want new players in the game. You want old players in the game. You want the ones who bought a stock before. You want people who are now willing uh, to continue with the stock coming up. You don't want people who will move out of the trade on any pullback. Comes up 15 cents, come down 10, and they will run away because it just moved in 10 cents before that. You want the strong hands to continue holding the trade with you. So high volume means a lot of new players, a lot of weak hands, uh, and you don't want that. You want low volume, you want the old players to remain, and then a breakout with high volume because that's a confirmation. So what about confirmation? Uh, and that would be the last thing I'm going to discuss today. Confirmation, guys, is one of the worst, looking for confirmation is one of the worst thing you, uh, you may be doing as a trader. I know a lot of books would say, look for confirmation, look for confirmation, can they look for uh, the stock to move over the highs, look for the stock to come down under the lows, uh, look for a clear reversal, look for a five minute reversal, look for it to move over this level, that level, here level, look for it to move a cent over that. Guys, that's good for beginners. I will teach my students this way. Yes, I would. 
So if you're a new student, there's no other way to teach you. I have to teach you the exact rules of trading. If you read a book, you find it there. But you cannot become a successful trader doing that. And I will tell you that. I will tell you that while I teach you that. So I will teach you the black and white rules. Look for a confirmation here. Look for a confirmation there. Here's the breakout. You move over this level, that's a breakout. Go long. You move under this level, that's a breakdown. Go short. If you guys are looking for a confirmation as beginners, you should. That's the way you're going to learn trading. If you guys continue trading, looking for confirmation, you will never become a successful trader. That's a good point Anthony just mentioned, and I want to discuss that with you right now. In order to become a successful trader, you must anticipate the confirmation. You must take a good look at the stock that you're trading and anticipate the next move. You can't do that as a beginner. You're just not good enough to do that. But once you become more and more familiar with trading, you're no longer a novice trader. You get to learn and to experience trading more and more. You'll take a look at the stock and say, wow, yeah, yes, the breakout is going to be here. But if it just moves over that level, which is before the breakout, it's most likely to go over. How can you, how can you, when I say most likely, I would say 80%. So I would still lose in 20%. But in 80% of the time, I'll be right. So if I'm watching a level and I'm saying, if it goes over this level without confirmation, it's probably going to continue. My confirmation is what I think about is going to happen soon where other traders who are not as as, as, as successful or as, as, um, um, as um, experienced as I am, uh, we'll wait for the real confirmation, the one they read in the book that is the right confirmation. And even then, very new traders will take a look at the chart and say, well, it just broke over $30. Should I go long? They know they should because it's a breakout. I'll be there 10 cents before the breakout expecting the breakout not at all times sometimes i take a look and i say well even here i don't see a clear chance it's going to go through but in many many times i may be there before a breakout or a breakdown or reversal before the confirmation novice traders would wait for no confirmation which is which is right for the first i don't know six months you're trading and then no longer you have to get through this point and even then, even when they see a confirmation, here's a stock, it just came over $30. They will take a look at the stock and say, well, you know what? Prove to me that you're really going to make it. You're up one cent. I don't, I don't buy that. Go up another three cents. Maybe I'll buy you. And then the stock goes up another two or three cents. He looks at, at the stocks and thinking, well, should I go long now? Stock looks back and say, I don't know. I mean, make up your mind now. And finally, it's going to click the button and go in like three, four, five cents over the price. And he will still feel good because the stock maybe made 35 cents and he made money. But he just lost three or four cents coming in. And this three or four cents, when you take a good look at your previous history, is a lot of money. And you cannot allow yourself to lose three or four cents just because you were looking for confirmation. And sometimes the trade would turn out to be a loser. And you lose three or four cents more than you should have lost because you were looking for confirmation. If you look for confirmation, that would be the worst thing you do. I mean, but you need to develop that. I can say that if you're just starting, forget about the last five minutes. I didn't say anything because I just put you in a tough situation and you are not capable of determining whether this is the right point or not the right point to move in. Sorry, but I had to say that it was a great question and I would love this uh, meeting with you guys to finish uh, in this spirit. If I didn't answer your question, sorry, I, I guess we could probably uh, stay around here and talk for the next uh, 10 hours. But there are things I need to do now. So thank you very much for being here with me today. I enjoyed it. Hope you did too. 
uh, we've been here for 50 minutes and we'll do more of this. We only started that recently and um, I know, I mean, we heard some, some, some of you guys that mentioned they want to have more and we've just done one. And there will be more, many more, I promise you guys. So you've got uh, the emails here of uh, Clifton and Gabe. And uh, uh, if you're willing to join us, uh, they'll give you the link uh, to join us uh, for our free trials and for our funded accounts, which we do, we do have a, a promotion right now for $3.99. You can join us and trade with us in our live trading room and build yourself as a trader. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And um, I'll see you in YouTube. I'll see you in our trading room. And I'll see some of you in our Star Trader course, which starts uh, this Sunday. Thank you, guys. Bye.